Nate, this week we've got Luca Garza on the uh, pod. The most excited I've been for an interview, probably. Um, how did you think it went today? Great. Uh, you can, uh, I mean, I was excited as well. Don't get me wrong. You can definitely tell that Luca's done 20,000 interviews. Yep. It, it's kind of a systematic thing. He's got the, everything in the back of his head. Uh, some short answers, he's probably because he wanted to get the hell out of there, but uh, just a class that guy. I mean, he didn't have to hop on with us. You know, like I said, he's probably done a million of these interviews. So I think people would enjoy some of the content that was throughout this episode. For sure. He just is a all business kind of guy. No fluff. I mean, his uh, work on the court is, is kind of that way, just gritty, relentless, and pretty much what I expected. He's, he's an awesome guy and a great representative. He's not going to say anything, anything you won't. Yeah, I, th I thought it was an awesome interview. I'm super excited for everyone to listen. And we have to th obviously thank our sponsor, Cookies Barbecue. Uh, they're the sauces that America loves to eat, and they're sauces that need to be on every Iowan's table. Uh, great seasonings, great sauces. You can find them at your local grocer or at cookiesbarbecue.com. Remember, smart cookies, choose cookies. All right, before we get into uh, Garza's interview, we want to do a recap of what kind of went throughout this weekend. Iowa State, with the biggest win in their football program history, taking the Fiesta Bowl and beating them, as Matt Campbell would say, we beat the fuck out of Oregon. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. It's, he's been animated, and I, I'm loving this guy more and more. Uh, he, he was put in a death sentence, as everyone described it, and I think that he's taken that program – and uh, and the challenge of getting them to where they are now with as much integrity and poise as I've as I've ever seen. So uh, obviously, I'm super pumped that they won that game, and I'm really excited to see if they can you know continue to build off of that kind of thing for years to come. Because you know I, I would say it hasn't been in that position, and I think that they're at, they have as good of a chance to um, repeat and continue to do great things in, in football. Uh that big question is, do you think Campbell returns? I mean, he's going to have everybody in the world lighting up his phone. I, you know, I do. I want to say, yeah. And, you know, I think about guys like Kirk Ferentz and, and, and others, you know, that get offers almost every year. Um, you know, obviously that Iowa State's program as a whole had the issue, not the issue, but the situation with Fred Hoiberg where a guy brings a team out of, you know, nothing into something and then gets a bigger offer and, and decides to go somewhere. I personally think that Campbell's mentality is to, uh, to build a dynasty, to build um, something special. Um, so it's my personal, personal opinion that he's going to stay. What do you think? I mean, you don't see it as much nowadays, especially if Kirk Ferentz, uh it's pretty, it's kind of a romantic thing for Kirk to stick around and be loyal to his program in the state. Most people nowadays kind of get their opportunity. They take the opportunity. They'll move up to the next level and take the money. But Campbell, to me, kind of seems like the guy that's like, he's all in on Iowa State. Let alone, I know Iowa State uh, is returning a bunch of athletes already. A few of them are already announced, especially with the extra year of eligibility. A few of them announced, hey, we're coming back. So Iowa State has the potential to be a top 15, top 10 team. Uh, my bet is that he stays, but I wouldn't be surprised if he were to go take an opportunity somewhere outside of the conference. I can't imagine going anywhere it was inside of the Big 12, maybe go somewhere else in the future and later come back to the Big 12 to a bigger team. But maybe I'm not sure about the NFL, but I could definitely see him going somewhere else. But my money is that he stays loyal to Iowa State this year. For this yeah, next year. I don't blame anyone ever when they, you know, take the opportunity because at this point, you know, anything less than the Fiesta Bowl may be a disappointment. I mean, if you're an Iowa State fan, you're you're looking for somebody to keep you competitive every year. So like I, I personally think that he's he's here for the long run, but I, I'm never surprised when somebody takes the payout. Uh, you mentioned the guys that have announced that they're sticking around. Uh, has, has Kohler announced that he is? Or is he I'm not sure about Kohler, but I know Allen, the receiver, uh, and a few other guys. Forgive me, I'm not that familiar if I would say, but I've seen uh, they I'm almost immediately right after the game. A few of them made their, their announcement on social media, sticking, hey, we're sticking around. But That'd a few big, big ones are like Brees Hall is only a junior, and I think Mike Rose, all defensive uh, first team for the clones. I think he's only a sophomore or junior. Cool. You yeah, might I, a lot of those guys are pretty young. Redshirt sophomores. And Brock Purdy, he's been there for eight years. He's only a junior. So he's come. I would assume that he's probably come back. I know. If he return, if he and uh, Brees return, that's going to be – I mean, that's a top-10 team, in my opinion. That's a team to beat. Purdy is so good. What, yes. What Iowa fans would do would die to have him behind Iowa's 
uh, dominant offensive line would just be incredible. He's got touch. He understands the game. He could throw the deep ball. And he's not a very quick quarterback, but he's mobile. He's mobile yeah. enough to get that first down if needed or at least create some extra time uh, for someone else to get open. I was saying that on Saturday. What a fun team to watch that uh, plays solid defense, has a quarterback that's going to make all the right throws and can make all the throws, a uh, running back that's you know top 10 in the Heisman. I mean, that's that's a, that's a picture-perfect football team. It's, it was super fun to watch them. So uh, hopefully really good things coming from Iowa and Iowa State. Drake men's basketball is 12-0. and 0. How do we feel about that? Yeah, uh, so last night was my first time I actually got to watch them. What's the uh, they, breakdown of their team? When, I, when, when my brother and I turned on the channel, they hit, they hit their first four threes and we're up 20 all the time. I'm like, dude, these guys don't miss. They looked hot. They looked like their 12 and 0 team. Coach DeVries has something spicing up over there in Drake. And remember, with the, the Missouri Valley Conference this year, every team is playing each team twice, two days in a row. Oh, so like Evan, I think they played Evansville, who no Southern Illinois, who was seven to one of the seven to one overall, which is decent record, came to Drake, Des Moines, and played them two games in a row in Des Moines. Beat them twice. Yep. So some teams will get to play a team at their court. Well, if they play a away game, it's only going to be a away game for that season uh, prior to the MVC. So it's to me, that's tough to beat a team two days in a row. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that, that shows that they're and, for real. Uh -huh, So I, uh, they got a, and their best center last year with the Minnesota. So somehow that, which Robinson, Robbins was his name with Minnesota. He's been doing fantastic in Minnesota. And Drake obviously has continued to have success without him. So keep an eye on Drake basketball. I'm pumped up about Drake basketball. Yeah, that's awesome. I haven't awesome. had this type of hype since Adam Eppen, Emenecker era, era and everything. So got to keep an eye on Drake. You and I continues to struggle. Iowa State continues to struggle. Iowa men's basketball, however, had their two two wins last uh, Thursday and then Saturday, I think, against two ranked opponents, Northwestern, who was undefeated in first place in the Big Ten. We took care of them at home, and Iowa finally had the first away uh, road game win of the season at a tough, tough Rutgers. So, yep. Obviously, we get a chance to talk to Luca in a second, and uh, he, he touches on the the Big Ten gauntlet, and uh, it's a good time to have two back to back road or uh, Big Ten wins as we as we get into the heat of the season. Uh, definitely. Next game coming up is Thursday versus at Maryland, uh, which it's, it's, I can't imagine being a flipping coach right now in the big 10. I mean, it's gotta be the most stressful thing ever. Not, you're not guaranteed a win on any night, maybe against Nebraska, but that's about it. Yeah. So they, they do hop to number five now in the NCAA rankings. Um, but any game is up in the air. You're happy to, uh, to escape Rutgers with two free throws at the end from Keegan Murray and, and, uh, you know, win on the road there. We need to talk about Keegan Murray real quick. Uh, the Murray twins received a lot of terrible publicity when they first announced their commitment to Iowa. Two star recruits out of Cedar Rapids. Haven't really heard much about them. People are like, oh, great. What are these guys going to be? And then Keegan Murray, the res resurrection, reincarnation of Nicholas Bear, is performed to his role. Uh, had nine boards, 14 points against Rutgers, hit those two clutch free, free throws at the end to give him a one point lead. Unbelievable. Uh, he's what Iowa needs to take the next step. So kudos to him. Yeah. You got to love, love those guys that really know their role. I, I spoke on before we started recording that I'm, I'm pumped to see some of the guys like Wieskamp and Frederick and, and Bohan and all kind of seem to get a rhythm. I, I definitely think that Joe being a preseason all American had um, kind of a re to re-identify and, and re-figure out how he was going to, you know, play to the fullest of his potential. And I'm, I'm starting to see a better groove from him and, they're going to be a hard team to beat. I think everyone knew that, but I I wanted to see kind of how some of those key players adjusted to really working everything through Luca, who uh, you know isn't isn't a selfish player, but it's a guy that if you don't get him the ball every time down the court, it almost it's a waste. So right. it, it's fun to see those guys finally be seem to be more adjusted. Yeah, and hopefully Connor McCaffrey, who tweaked his ankle in the first three minutes of the game, came back at the very end, secured the pass inbounds to Joey's camp. Uh, hopefully he's healthy by Thursday, has some off time. Uh, that'll be big. And speaking of j -Bo, we threw on our story from Peter Go Peter Jock's interview that who would win a, a three-point contest. Jock, without a, any hesitation, says me, of course. Yep, Jock says himself. Yep, j -Bo throws on story. We had a quick poll on our Instagram uh, 164 to 104 vote Jordan Mohannon, which is a good 61%. And then j said and openly invited and Peter Jock, next time you're in the state or in the area, let's light it up. Let's, let's figure this out. So that would be a hell of a show. That'd be funny. 
We're gonna have to record a live show during that uh, during that event. Right, right. We'll have to get behind that. Maybe just All right, Brian. Is there anything else we need to cover? Any predictions for 2021? Any resolutions? I everyone keeps asking me about my res. I hate resolutions. My resolution is to be the same damn person, but just be better. Yep. Any uh, have- any predictions for uh, the show? Any anything you want to accomplish? Uh, I just want to keep growing the audience, growing our subscribers, our likes, our influence, and continue to grab great guests. I don't know how we beat Spencer Lee and Luca Garza. To be honest, nowadays I'm not even surprised who shows up on the screen. I'm like, oh shit. You know, yeah, he's I'm the best super player excited about some of the college basketball. Them. Yeah, we, we got to get some more staters. We got to get some more bulldogs. We got, I mean, we got to diversify a little bit. We've got, we've had three hawks, but um, I'm, I'm super excited to keep having some uh, awesome guys on the show and uh, keep growing the, you know, giving the people what they want. Definitely, uh, you know, comment and uh, and everything what you want to see. Um, we should probably put some more things out on social about, you know, what kind of content you want to hear from us. And um, otherwise, you know, like, subscribe, and, and definitely take a look on on the new video uh, format that we got going on YouTube. Yeah, appreciate it. Let's see our pretty faces. Uh, we would, this again, like everything kind of Bryce said. Uh, and not one more interview I'm excited about is Amir Smith Marset. But yes, we would love, and this is an open invitation to either Drake, you and I, Iowa State, we've We've messaged some other guys, but they just they want nothing to do with us. The Iowa guys do for some reason. Yeah, I, I'm gonna blame it on you. You've been a fan for years and building, you know, the Iowa Chill following. You you definitely have hedged towards the the uh, Hawks. So, um, you know, maybe we got to give a little bit more love to the clones and, and Bulldogs and, and everybody else. But, yeah, but they uh, definitely deserve it right now. We'll get them. We'll get them. Cool. Well, I'm excited for the interview. Excited for everyone to hear it. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Nate, can you uh, kick us off? Yeah, uh, Bryce, how was your New Year's Eve? Had a great New Year's Eve. Uh, very COVID style esque, but it's good to uh, get 2020 behind us and and the new year kicked off. I'm ready for uh, a better one. That's right. Well, first we want to welcome our welcome our guest today, preseason National Player of the Year, runner up last season, uh, All American. He averaged just 27.5 points per game, 9.1 boards a game. Uh, University of Iowa men's basketball player, Luca Garza. Luca, how are you today, and how was your New Year's Eve? Oh, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Uh, my New Year's Eve was uh, different than usual, uh, but it was still it was still fun uh, just to be around the guys. Um, you know, obviously this year is different than any other year, but you know, we're definitely making the most of it. Got some uh, – you got hot around the holiday. You're, you're back. You're on the winning streak. Feels good. It's fun to watch. Yeah, that – Definitely, you know, big big week for us. Uh, I've got got two big wins over some great teams. Uh, you know, great way to bounce back from uh, you know our loss on Christmas. Right. Yeah. So yeah, two back to back ranked wins. Uh, you played at the rack this week. Tell me, kind of describe the atmosphere without fans this year because we're I know the rack's notorious for just one of the crazier atmospheres of the Big Ten, if not the country, uh, especially with this year with no fans. Can you describe that a little? Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, I, I think the rack is, is tough to play in, whether there's fans or not, just because they're so good at home. You know, I think we were one of the, uh, one of two teams to beat them in the last 26 games, you know, up there. So, you know, it, it was great for our team to be able to go in there and get a win. But, you know, uh, we have, we've played in a sold out rack arena. You know, obviously Joe Wieskamp hit the game winner. Um, so we've seen it at, at its best and, it, and it's a great environment. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's obviously unfortunate that we can't have the, that this year, but, um, you know, it, it, it was definitely still, you know, a really great win. Sure. Catching heat at the right time. The Big Ten gauntlet begins. Uh, can you describe what that's like playing in, in a, such a competitive conference and, and what that means late in the season for, you know, not only the player load, but also your readiness to play in, in the Big Ten tournament and most likely the NCAA tournament? It was awesome. You know, I think, you know, when you play in our league, you're so, you know, battle tested and, and ready when it comes to March um, that, it, you know, it's kind of like once you get there, you're like, thank God we're just not playing, uh, you know, a team from the Big Ten anymore. We're playing somebody else. So um, it, it's definitely awesome. And as a competitor, you know, I've always wanted to play against the best. So to be able to play in the best league is, is a dream come true. And it's a lot of fun. Right. Uh, you just talked about March. Speaking of March, it sounds like the NCAA tournament will be held entirely in Indianapolis. All right, what's your thoughts on that? You're probably just like, screw it, dude. I'm just happy it's happening. Yeah, it doesn't matter where it is. You know, I'm just happy for it to be happening. And 
um, you know, it, it's definitely going to be fun and, and hopefully we can make the most of, of our opportunity there. So going back to last year, you know, we, we don't get the big 10 tournament. We don't get the, uh, the March madness tournament. Uh, what does this year look like? Uh, you know, how does that impact your decision to come back? And then how does it impact the preparation once you've decided to uh, return to Iowa and, and have your, uh, have your season? Uh, and, you know, definitely. I think, you know, for me, it was something that was heartbreaking not to be able to have that. And I think a lot of people, you know, grow up dreaming of playing in the NBA. And I was one of those kids. But I think you also dream of playing on a great college team and, and, and making a run in March. Uh, so not being able to have that, you know, definitely affected my decision. You know, I felt like, you know, I, I had unfinished business here at the University of Iowa and, and I wanted to make something special happen. And, you know, I saw the potential of the group that we had, you know, coming back. And, and that's why I decided to come back. And it was the best decision I could have made for myself and for the team. Um, and, and I'm very you know, lucky to be a part of this group and, and I'm excited for it to continue to go forward. Cool. Uh, kind of going back to last season when you started coming on the rise, you had, I mean, part of that season you had a battle, like what, an eight pound cyst in your stomach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was crazy. One of the you know more crazy things that's ever happened to me, uh, you know, just I, I have finding out the news that I had to get surgery, you know, right after I'd worked so hard over the summer to prepare for a season and, and to find out that, you know, something, um, you know, was life threatening going on with my body. So, you know, it was definitely, you know, a crazy experience, but, you know, I think it, it made me a better person because I had to push through that adversity, adversity to get back on the, uh, on the floor of my guys. And, and that made me, you know, just more grateful uh, for the opportunity to play this game and, and to be at the university of Iowa. And, you know, I'm just so thankful I was here because of all the surgeons and the staff and, and the medical staff and everybody. That's the reason, you know, the surgery was so successful and I was able to play that year. Yeah. Uh, so, again, through your sophomore year, I remember my roommate, he's like, dude, I'm telling you, guards is going to be a hell of a guy. I mean, you like, you never missed your threes. Uh, you, you're a consistent player, kind of sh over, overshadowed by Tyler Cook, which happens. And then I would say last year I went to the Las Vegas Invitational or that tournament down in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. I watched you guys play. So that was, that was really my first time I got to watch you up close. I'm like, God, I think we need to get them more often. You don't miss those shots around the hoop. And then shortly right after that tournament, you had your 44-point output against Michigan. Were you kind of surprised when that night happened? You're like, or you just kind of been waiting for that to happen? Um, no, honestly, you know, going into that season, I knew I was going to have an increased role um, with, with Tyler Cook leaving. Um, you know, I was playing the four previously while he was playing the five. And, you know, uh, coach kind of sat me down and talked to me and, and told me what to expect this year and, um, and to be ready for it. And, you know, I really was. And I, I prepared myself in the offseason to get ready for that. Um, but honestly, you know, I, I think the only thing that really surprised me about that game is 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 I, I had so much space. You know, I, I was they, their game plan was – you know, to not double team me, which was, you know, I was starting to see double teams a lot more often. Um, and, and, and to not get double team was kind of a, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun just, you know, to be able to play in a block one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I, I don't really get that opportunity uh, anymore. Not but, much anymore. You know, I, I took advantage of it when I could. That's what, dude, you need to influence that Dirk Nowinski step back a little more. <laughs> she gets money for sure. For sure, for sure. I've been so we, working on it. We mentioned the uh, the cyst and the recovery that's uh, that goes along with that, and uh, you know, going from you know a supportive four with Cook and and that team to then the stardom and and really the spotlight, um, all of that exhibits what everyone is uh, is what everyone is getting to know you as uh, the relentless hard work, uh, the guy that's never going to quit, um, tireless energy. Um, Nate and I compare you to the the work ethic of MJ. Um, what inspires that? What what gets you going? And how do you keep up that that level of intensity? You know, honestly, uh, you know, I just love the game of basketball, and I think it's it's as simple as that. You know, I, my love for it just you know I want to be as good as it at it as I can be, and I want to reach my t potential as a basketball player. So that's really what drives me. And I think the people I have around me and the family I have around me is is also another thing. Just you know, I grew up that way um, with with my mother and my father, who you know both were very hardworking. And they, they taught me that as a young age that, you know, the harder, harder you work, the luckier you get. Uh, so I just wanted to work as hard as I could and, and to reach my potential. Uh, I mean, it would be disgraceful if we didn't mention anything about your dad. Uh, <laughs> talk about an influential person uh, just for all Iowa fans and especially you. Can you describe some of the just about his impact on your life, your game and everything else? Yeah, I mean, he, he is the reason I'm here uh, where I am today. You know, I, he pushed me 
um, you know, at a young age, you know, when, when I didn't see why, you know, when I didn't know why he was pushing me so hard and, and now, you know, I kind of understand it and it's, and it's continue to go forward. Um, but you no, know, I, I'm very lucky uh, to have him as a father and, 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 and a, and a work and a trainer and a coach or whatever, you know, he, he plays multiple roles in my life. Um, and, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, but no, I, I definitely wouldn't be you know, the person or, or player I am today without him. Okay. Okay. Before we get on things, did, does he live in Iowa city? Do, I feel like he's, what a guy no. he's always there Did he just fly there all the time or how, how the hell is that yeah work? He, he flies um to every game um but you no know, now with COVID he stays here for an extended period of time so he'll he'll have a, a room at the hotel um he has to deal with the graduate and he stays there uh for you know however however long we have his home stretch and he's obviously home right now because we're playing Rutgers and Maryland back to back but then he'll be here for the Minnesota game but you know it's it's crazy before this year he had only missed I think two games um in my career and then now he's starting to miss a lot more because you know the, most away teams don't have fans um allowed in the building so it's a lot different this year but he's he's coming to every home game he can um and and I'm, I'm very thankful to have him there and, and and it's a lot of fun i think that's one of the hardest parts for me is that you know he can't get the crowd going he panning over <laughs> to uh to frank is one of my favorite parts of the game yeah, no, it's 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 hilarious to see him go in the crowd. He loves it, and uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. So, let's uh, let's get into this year's team. I, it, we talked to Peter a couple weeks ago, and and we got to talk to uh, him about you know really not being recognized as a basketball school and and having to almost be a part of that rebuilding process. Now, you know, we've got uh, yourself who's in the national spotlight as as a preseason player of the year. We've got a team that's you know comes in ranked. Uh, top five, really, really high expectations. So can you speak on the evolution of the team and, um, you know, how that how that leadership uh, circle kind of looks? You no, know, definitely. You know, I think when when you have a team that has so many expectations as ours, you know, going into it, you have to make sure that, you know, the whole team stays balanced and, and, and understands that, you know, we have to improve every single day and, and win every day and we can't focus on any other thing um, than just winning each and every day because uh, you're still so worried about, you know, Final Four, everything like that. You're not really worried about what's in front of you. I mean, obviously, we have those goals and we have those expectations. Um, but, you know, for us right now, we're just focused on, like I said, just improving every day and, and being as good as we can be, um, you know, each and every practice, each and every workout, each and every game. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's definitely awesome to be a part of this group, you know, coming from where we were my freshman year, um, being 14 and 19, and then, you know, being an overtime away from the sweet 16 and then, you know, to now be here as a top five team, it, it, it's been awesome, but we're not even close to done yet. And, and I'm excited to continue to push forward with this group. Awesome. Uh, you have a pretty rich history. Your family does of basketball. It, correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys are, the, the heritage is Bosnian. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm, you, Bosnian. I'm half yeah. Bosnian. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know what? Uh, uh, every summer when I was younger, we used to go over there and, and I would stay pretty much the whole summer in Europe, uh, in Bosnia, and in Italy. Um, you know, I have family in, in different places. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, it, it's such an important part of my life. That's, you know, my culture. Um, and, you know, to see my mom who, you know, grew up there and only came to the U.S. because of the war and, and, and all the family I have over there and all the, you know, European basketball players that, you know, I've learned from. And my uncle was played at Oregon State with Gary Payton and was one of the best, you know, Slovenian basketball players. You know, I think there's just a lot of history there that I learned from and helped kind of shape me, um, you know, into to who I am. So it's definitely a very important part of me. And, you know, I, I'm excited that hopefully in the future I can represent, you know, Bosnia and play for the national team. That's, I think, yeah, so we're, question. Yeah, we were going to ask, are you eligible for the Olympic team? Yeah, I have to, you know, I don't have dual system right, right now. I'm actually in the process of, of getting that, um, you know, I'm obviously 50% Bosnian, so I can have a dual citizenship. But once I get that, then I'll be able to, you know, play with the the Bosnians. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, with that, we're getting towards the end of uh, our interview with you. Towards the end of every interview, we kind of do like a rapid fire segment, some general mm -hmm. questions and some fan questions. The first question is: If you couldn't play basketball, what sport would you want to play? Uh, the only other sport I play, I played track in high school and baseball when I was younger. So I probably said baseball. Yeah. I gotta know, 
uh, what is the pregame ritual? How do you come out so consistent every game? You know, I've talked about this before, um, but honestly, you know, my biggest thing before a game is meditation. You know, that, that just keeps me in a great mindset going into each and every game that I, I feel like I can be my best every single night. Cool. There's a, I mean, you've played all throughout the country. What are some of your favorite venues and what are the, some of the toughest venues that you played in? I think, you know, one of the toughest I'd have to say is Purdue or, or Michigan State. Um, and, you know, even the rack, you know, I think those three places are very, very tough to play in. And my favorite to play in is uh, either Carver, Carver Hawkeye Arena or Madison Square Garden. We uh, had a chance to talk to Spencer Lee the other day, and and mm -hmm. uh, we had to kind of get the inside scoop on on uh, you know the inner workings of the team. But we got to know what is your best bromance, or who wins best bromance on the team. Oh, that one's hard. I think you know. Uh, I think you got to go with Joe Tucson and Patrick McCaffrey. The roommates, you know, they're always together. They're always in the gym together. You don't really see those two, you know, far apart. <laughs> so I definitely see those two. Love it. All right, uh, two more questions left for the rapid fire segment. What, what is your favorite place to eat in Iowa City? My favorite place to eat in Iowa City. Um, yeah, I'd probably say Pullman Bar and Diner. That's probably my favorite place. Um, you know, that's not like a, a chain place. That or Monica's are, are my favorite restaurants. Yeah, I was waiting for Monica's. Monica's. That's a, yeah, that's those beat. two are my favorite. I'm going to treat you guys well there. Okay, we got to say thank you to our sponsor, Cookies Barbecue. Uh, every week we do the Cookie Saucy Question of the Week. And this one for Luca is, what advice do you have for all the kids and athletes growing up wanting to reach a level that you're at or at the best that they can be? Uh, how do they do such a thing and, and, and get those accomplishments? You know, I think, you know, honestly, it's pretty simple. I think hard work, and, uh, you know, can can do anything you know i think any type of player you know no matter if you're fast or you're slow or you're short or you're tall you know you work hard and you believe in yourself um you definitely can you know make something out of yourself so you know, i think that, that's pretty much all my advice all right cool uh luca before we let you go i want to say we appreciate you for choosing iowa uh i although you made my life a living hell last year with Connor mccaffrey's <laughs> tweet kind of pranking everyone <laughs> Not a Nazi for coming back or not. Or decision. Uh, what in the hell was that about? You know, that was, I told uh, my roommates the night before that you know, I, I decided to come back. And, you know, that was kind of Connor's idea to, to go ahead and mess with everybody. So, you know, that we kind of did that. And that was, that was really funny to see everybody's reaction. Everyone thought it was over and it was, it was a lot of fun. Well, we definitely appreciate you having, having another year with us and, and making the state of Iowa proud. That's, that's kind of what we do over at Iowa Trail HQ, and it's been super fun watching, and we can't wait for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for having me. Yeah, yeah no problem. Good luck the rest of the season, Luca. Yeah, I appreciate it.